Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. With the polls pointing towards a minority government, the Liberals are pleading with voters not to deliver a hung parliament. On the 10th anniversary of their rise to power, the Premier believes majority is within reach. Ten years to the day since he led the Liberals to power, Will Hodgman's concerned about the looming threat of minority government. Um, this election next week is so important. Elections can literally change the direction of a state. Celebrating a key achievement of their time, the extension of all high schools to Year 12. We've turned Tasmania around and we've gone from economic laggard to leading the nation. The latest polls have the Liberals hovering around 35% support strongly suggesting a hung parliament. We're in striking distance of majority. I believe we can win majority, that's what drives me. I've also said uh, that I respect the will of the people. A fake Jackie Lambie network website created by the Liberals prompted the Senator to question Jeremy Rockliffe's integrity. He's still standing by it. We have every right to highlight uh, the policy failures of our political opponents. Tasmanians deserve to know uh, where their political parties and the leaders of those parties, where they stand on key issues. Unafraid to take down a crossbench he might rely on in the future as he makes his pitch to voters. Tasmanians, I believe, have a very clear choice to make on March the 23rd. A strong majority government or a Labor-led uh, minority government a coalition of chaos. Still confident they're in the hunt, Labor says the presents delivered by the Liberals in the last 10 years aren't so sweet. It's a cost of living crisis. Cost so of living crisis. Yeah. Happy birthday. Unfortunately, the results are showing that our economy is now shrinking. It's showing that our health system is worse than ever and it's showing that our education results for our students are getting worse. Uh, we've heard promise after promise at this election and previous ones, but everything we're seeing and the community is saying is that things are going backwards. Tasmania decides whether 10 becomes 14 in just eight days. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Targeting housing shortages in regional areas, Labor says it will build 500 homes across the state for key workers. Rebecca White announced a plan today in the Fingal Valley, saying it will help staff schools, childcare centres and provide health care. Over the past 12 months, there's been a lot of discussion in the local community trying to find accommodation for teachers who are working at St Mary's and great difficulty in doing that. Yeah, but in Break Day, we find it excruciating that we have positions available and we have no homes for those people. Homes would be built over the next five years. Meanwhile, the Greens are in the state's remote southwest today, visiting Melaleuca to highlight the importance of our wilderness world heritage areas. The party committing $39 million over four years to the Parks and Wildlife Service if elected. To expand our world heritage area, to have proper, appropriate tourism infrastructure and most importantly, to upscale the resources of Parks and Wildlife. It's so important for us, our community and our future generations uh, to make sure that we protect what is left of our heritage. The Greens would also fight to establish a new reserve national park tenure to return land to Aboriginal ownership. Metro mechanics spent the day on strike demanding better wages and more staff, claiming to be paid $10 an hour less than the industry rate. A pledge has been created to bridge the gap, Labor and the Greens, as well as several independent candidates flagging their support. What do we want? Fix Metro! When do we want it? Now! We've seen over 50% turnover in the last two years. Two more mechanics have left just this year, in 2024, and one third of positions are still vacant. Under a Labor government, workers will get the pay they deserve. Industry rates of pay, uh, there'll be more workers and more services into suburbs where there is transport disadvantage. The Liberal Party did not respond to our requests for comment. Tasmania Police is investigating two fires at Ravenswood overnight. Fire crews were called to the Prosser's Forest Road area about 6pm. They remained in the area today to conduct a backburn. There is no threat to communities. Residents in the area have raised concerns about fires being deliberately lit. Detectives are actively investigating.
The dinner plans of Tasmanian fans of Maccas are up in the air tonight with reports the fast food chain is suffering a crippling nationwide outage. The issue, which started at 4.30, is affecting McDonald's kiosks and FPOS machines. Customers have told 7 Tasmanian News they're being turned away. Many stores have been forced to shut, unable to take payments. Tasmanian children can reach for the stars thanks to a new space-themed playground. It's wheelchair-friendly equipment funded by a bequest from a former resident with mobility issues. Packed on opening day, Benjafield Park's new playground a hit with the locals. I love the um, zip lines because they go really slow for children and also I love how the slides go up. We've been uh, watching through the windows every morning to see when the fence would come down and then uh, yeah, this morning I was like, oh buddy, let's go. The equipment's space theme chosen by the community and rocketing above expectations. We voted on that one and we're really happy with um, with what's been put in. Catering to all abilities, the playground is home to Tasmania's second We Go Swing, funded by a bequest from late resident Reginald Webb, who suffered with mobility issues. We installed the other one at, at um, Giblin's Reserve and on that day we, we noticed a, a young fellow in, a, in an electric wheelchair getting on that and using it first off and that, yeah, that was a great moment. The entire project costing $1.2 million. It was funded through uh, sale of underutilised land in our municipality, a $1 million sale to Homes Tasmania, which will now become affordable social housing. Tools down just in time for a sunny weekend. I've got a picnic planned for tomorrow with a group of friends, so we're here. <laughs> Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Launceston Airport has hit new record highs with 1.3 million passengers passing through the airport over the past 12 months. It was the busiest February on record with more than 126,000 passengers transiting through the facility. Boss Shane O'Hare promoting the figures as positive for the northern Tasmanian economy. We see the, the winery businesses between South Australia and the north of Tasmania booming because of um, the uh, South Australian links there with non-stop flights. So it's great for the economy, it creates jobs. Officials also spruik the figures as an exciting period of growth for the airport. Residents in the city of Hobart are being asked to have their say on the area's parks and gardens. Council launching a survey about the city's green spaces, seeking feedback on what ratepayers love and what they'd like to see improved guide where our open spaces are going to be in the future and also how we're managing them now. Um, do we have enough parks in the right places? Do we have enough playgrounds in the right places? I think the important thing is that people just obviously enjoy the parks, respect the parks as well. Tasmanian photographers are also invited to show their love of the city's outdoor areas with a prize on offer for the best snapshot of an open space. Next week's Sheffield Shield final will be Matthew Wade's last game of red ball cricket. The veteran announcing his retirement, but the good news is he's staying aboard the cane train for a couple more years. Cradling his new bundle of joy, Matthew Wade's decision makes perfect sense. They certainly deserve to have me around for a little bit more. I'm, as a professional cricketer, you're quite selfish throughout the, your whole career and... Um, I've certainly done that and Julia sacrificed a lot more than what I've had to. Wade got his call up to the Tasmanian domestic side in 2006 before making what he says was a difficult decision to move to Victoria the following season. I wanted to pursue playing for Australia is, was the main decision to go to Victoria and I felt like with Gilchrist coming to an end and Haddon was going to get a little opportunity that I, at a keeping level, that, I, that was kind of my window. He eventually got his baggy green in 2012 in 36 test matches, recording four centuries, 11 stumpings, taking 74 catches and driving a certain catch call to infamy. Nice, Gary! Fair to say he's come a long way. Just want to obviously thank um, Clarence Creek Club, um, give him me my start when I was uh, a 13 or 14 year old kid walking in there and not knowing anything about cricket. Missing in action with back pain for several matches this season, the writing may have been on the wall for Wade, but he says the time is right to take a step back with Tasmanian selectors spoilt for choice. I never really wanted to take a kid's spot at any stage throughout the back end of my career and until this year I haven't felt like 
I have been taking in one spot or a kid's really been pushing to take my spot. Um, now I think those guys are ready to play and it's time to move on. We haven't seen the last of Wadey with two years left to run on his Hurricanes contract. And there is, of course, still a Shield final at the Wacker next week. Decided to go over to Perth and maybe get away from the green wicket for a week and try and get some runs would be nice as well. The Jack Jumpers hit the court today for a light session ahead of Sunday's opening game of the grand final series. Ignoring calls about his future as a boomer, star Jack McVeigh says his sole focus is on scoring Tasmania's first championship. He's been touted as a rising star, but Jack McVeigh has his feet firmly on the ground ahead of the NBL Grand Final Series. Every kid can dream, but for me it's just focusing on now, being where my feet are, uh, enjoying the moment. Averaging 17 points per game this season, the Jackie Sharp shooter has been a cool and calm performer. Off court, however, McVeigh has been riding the highs and lows. I feel like I've aged a little bit. I definitely need to go to the barber, get a beard. My mono brow's growing crazy at the moment. Only getting home at 10 p.m. last night. Today was a light recovery day for the team. Wednesdays win their seventh victory in eight matches and one of their most complete. We definitely felt like that was Jack Jumper basketball, everyone doing their thing. With the Wildcats taken care of, the focus is now on minor premier Melbourne United. The team confident the hype and travel of the past 24 hours won't be a factor. We had like four hours maybe to enjoy it after the game and then it's locked in. Travel, who cares at this time of the year? Like we're ready to go back to Melbourne, play in a very familiar place. John Kane Arena also a happy place over the years. They've won two of three games at the venue this season. If you don't bring it when you go to John Kane Arena against either of those two teams, and of late, especially Melbourne United, you've got to get your butt handed to you. Tasmania have also beaten United twice this year, with players preparing for a solid contest. They've been the best team all season, but we're, we're feeling good, and it's going to be one tough physical battle. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. With the Summer Cup done and dusted, it's NPL time for Tassie clubs. Devonport begin their title defence at home against Clarence on Saturday. The club started on the right note in the pre-season cup, defeating Kinbra in last week's final. While the team is still bonding well, the coach says there is room for improvement. Six new players in total, so we're just trying to bed some of those in still. There'll be some teething issues, as there always are with new players, and just adjusting to systems. In the WSL League, newcomers Glenorchy are dreaming of a perfect start when they face Launceston United. We're really happy where we're at at the moment, so um, optimistic that we'll play well, optimistic that we'll play to the, the type of structure that's, that we've been training. That match kicks off at Birch Road at midday tomorrow. There's plenty of noise out at Simmons Plains as TCR Race Tasmania hits the track. Drivers re-familiarising themselves with the unique circuit as teams put the finishing touches on the cars. To get two wins to start the season was really good. Um, but look, the team are working hard and they're giving me a really good rocket ship at the moment. So I feel good. Last year here was my first event in the cars. So having 12 months in a car and now coming back here, we can see the improvement that we've made in those 12 months. Tasmanian Super 2 driver Lockie Dalton is switching gears in more ways than one, scaling back the horsepower with the Hyundai XLs. It's very grassroots racing, so it's just you and the race car, really. Um, I mean, we don't have these big trailers like we're, we're used to. Racing takes place tomorrow and Sunday. Great Britain's Michael Taylor has claimed Devonport's World Para Series triathlon in the PTS4 category. Liam Toomey, the best of the Aussies, in fifth. Italian Giovanni Ascenza winning the PTWC category. Aussie Nick Beveridge coming in third. The triathlon continues tomorrow with the Elite and Sprint Championships. Good evening. Hobart registered 18 degrees today. Launceston the high around the state, 24. Devonport and Burnie, 20. Maximum temperatures generally within 2 degrees of average. King Island, 23. Flinders, 22. Friendly Beaches, Grove and Bushy Park, all 21. Lowhead, 20. Lyawini and Strawn, 19. Lyawini are low with a minus 2. Low clouds surrounded the west coast and also the south and east coast today, bringing a few showers before dawn but mainly sunny this afternoon. Mid to high level cloud mixed up with a jet stream is moving across South Australia 
Australia. The top end has extensive areas of cloud as well. Tomorrow a ridge of high pressure is still over our region. A low lies off the Pilbara coast while the other one over the top end looks like forming into a tropical cyclone. Our winds a bit lighter than that with variable winds at 15 knots tending easterly over northern waters at 10 to 20 knots. Hobart, Saturday, 21 and partly cloudy, 21 also for Medina. Oatlands, fine, 5 overnight, 22 the high tomorrow. Launceston, 24 and cloudy, 22 the top for Devonport. Partly cloudy for Lyoweenie, a bit warmer tonight, 5 degrees, 18 tomorrow. Burnie, partly cloudy and 20, 21 the high for Strawn. Marrawar, partly cloudy and 23 degrees. And for the East Coast, St Helens, 22, 21 for Swansea and Orford. On Sunday, fine and partly cloudy weather for the state. Launceston, 27, Hobart and Strawn, 25. A shower over the northwest and east on Monday with maybe a patch over Launceston. Hobart, 29 degrees. But showers on the way on Tuesday. Some welcome rain for most of the state. Further north tomorrow, let's have a look around the, uh, the Northern Ireland. 34 in Perth and sunny. Few showers for Adelaide, 31 the top there, 29 for Melbourne, showery up the east coast, Sydney 25 and Brisbane 28. OK, in Hobart at the moment, cooling down to 15 degrees, not Launceston 19 and currently in Devonport 18 degrees. Kim, I'm off to practice for the next couple of nights, so I want to be ready and primed for St Patrick's Day. And that wraps up your Friday night bulletin. Michael and Murph will be with you over the weekend. For now, on behalf of the team, it is good night.